forever at work in ourselves and in the world. Indeed, amen. So I invite us um, to kind of move our bodies a bit in preparation even for the, the beautiful music that we will receive this morning. And so if you are able, I invite you to stand. And once again, to just imagine yourself stretching up like a tree, tall, and then open yourself wide. Let your reach out and imagine yourself even bigger than the room you're in, expanding out. And then gently wrap that up and give yourself a little hug. Gently roll over as you're able. Swing down there a little bit. And gently roll up. And squirm yourself around wherever your body needs it. And then open yourself with angel's wings and let your heart expand and bump hearts with somebody else's heart. Bring it back. And again, let yourself expand and bump hearts and bring it back. And just kind of pat yourself a little bit and wake yourself up and be thankful for your own body. And maybe move your hips around a little. And just feel the life force flowing through you. I imagine, I invite you to imagine feeling yourself like a fountain. And imagine at the base down in front of you, there's this golden liquid light filled with love and joy and peace and hope. And with your hands, kind of reach down and bring it up and kind of bring it up through your feet, through your torso through your head and then let it spill out like a fountain of light and go wee and let it cascade all around you. And take a deep breath and let it out with a sigh. And again, gather up some of that light, that golden liquid loving light like a fountain water with gold in it. And bring it all the way up through your feet, through your torso, through your heart, through your head, and let it spill out, wee, all around you. So you are the fountain. And keep taking a deep breath, and as you take a deep breath, pull it in, let it run through you, and then let it spill out your head and all around. And feel yourself a fountain of light, a fountain of love like a lantern of light and goodness. And then I invite you to imagine some of it. And now all that goodness and that love and that hope has turned into a big pile of confetti in front of you. And you're gonna scoop some of it up and share it out with the world. And scoop some of it up and share it out with the world. And imagine all that golden light of love and confetti descending all over the planet. Scoop it up and spread it out with the world. As we share this confetti of love and light and peace and freedom. And let us watch it descend across our nation and let it spread from there over the whole planet. And then let it come back into our own heart and just put your hands over your heart for a moment and feel your heart beat. Give thanks for the love that beats there, the love of the divine that beats through your heart. As you are the hands, the heart, the body, the love of the divine shared with the world. And then we just open our hands once again, offering that light and love to others. And then let us give a namaste to each other as we honor the light in each other. They invite us to sit back down. And again, just take a deep breath and let it out on the side. 
And I invite us to hold that promise, that goodness in our being. And so I want to um, introduce this song that I uh, asked Joanne to record and she did just such a beautiful job with it. Some of you may know it as the hymn, How Can I Keep From Singing? And if you uh, scroll down on your bulletin to the very bottom, you'll see the lyrics. You'll also see underneath of that actually a paragraph about the cover art image that I really appreciate. It's by a uh, local artist, Sue Ellen Parkinson, who's given us permission to use it. And um, holding that, that justice and mercy that we are praying for our nation so I invite you to um, reflect on the words for yourself as you hear it. If you know the tune and you want to sing along, uh, feel free to do that. And um, let us be blessed by this um, beautiful mu music and the spirit of the song this morning. Oh, 
So very beautiful. Thank you, Joanne and Tom. Truly a gift of grace and beauty for all of us to hold and behold into our hearts. Indeed, how can we keep from singing? And we want to lift up our thanks and our gratitude. Also to God, who is present with us. And so as we start our prayer time this morning, I want us to start by lifting up prayers of gratitude, whatever is on our hearts that we're grateful for, not just about um, particular wins or losses, but about our hope. And so I just invite us first to share whatever our gratitude is, our prayer of gratitude, and then we'll shift into our prayers of concern. So if you have a prayer of gratitude you'd like to lift up, I invite us to unmute yourself and share that prayer of gratitude. I just have so much gratitude for the opportunity to have visited the sanctuary yesterday, um, to have a little bit of time to visit with you, Kimberly. Um, and just to, to be in the presence of this beautiful place where for me, FCC all started, um, but to have a chance to visit and then to just take in the beautiful paintings from Manoush. I, I'm, I'm just absolutely blown away with how restorative they are and how they just feed me. And they're so cosmic, they're so, they just connect to the to the universe and in a spiritual way that I've I've never experienced any other way through through art. I've always been into images, but there's just something that's so transforming and transcendental and spiritual that I get through those through that beautiful work. And I just feel Manoush through that too. So and to see Lynn, um, what a treat. So I I was it was awesome. Thank you. And the results obviously at the election are just Awesome. <laughs> Bye. Great. We give thanks. Thank you. Lynn. And then Ruth. Hey, you're muted, sweetheart. There you go. A box came up. I don't know why and got in the way. Um, yeah, I just wanted to echo what Hope said. It was just so lovely to be there and to see Hope and Jim and and Joanne and Jesse and uh, I, at, towards the end, Cindy came in, so I got to see her. And um, yeah, the, the, the paintings just fed me in a way that I haven't experienced before. Um, so I wanna lift that up, but also your prayers, Kimberly, were just, oh, just beautiful. And um, it, was, it was just great to be there with, with you all on such a wonderful day. So blessings, 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 and thank you. We give thanks, Ruth. And as we pray and as we give thanks and we continue to hold that gratitude in our hearts, we also turn our prayers towards the needs of either ourselves or our families or the nation or the world or the planet. So let us continue to lift up our prayers in the way that we have been as we address divine source of all being God, however you wanna express it and we share our prayer and then we'll conclude by saying God in your grace and we will say together, you hear our prayers. Let us continue to lift up our prayers this morning. I, I read a little article this morning that the people of the Dakotas are undergoing a major increase in the coronavirus. And I, I pray that they uh, somehow come together as community to, to help put a stop to, to what can have some control if if we wear masks and, and cover up. And one of the things they said is that almost no one is wearing masks there. Uh, they don't believe in them. 
or something. I, I don't know what there is to believe in, but <laughs> uh, I'm so grateful that in California, um, people do. And people are pretty respectful and, and know that this is a gift to each other to do this. So I pray, God, that you, you help the people in the Dakotas, help those who are suffering from the disease and uh, help them to, to come forward in their thinking uh, in a way that can help everyone there. Uh, God, in your grace. You hear our prayers. for all who continue to need healing in this time, both physical, emotional, and spiritual. I would like to add prayers for my dear friend, Judy Shook, who is a Methodist pastor, served in the Bay Area for a long time, recently living in North Carolina, who was recently diagnosed with COVID after visiting a church member who later discovered that they were ill. May her case indeed be mild. May her immune system stay strong. And may she be filled with the light of hope and possibility. And may all who are struggling with this disease across our nation find healing, be with all the doctors and nurses, healthcare workers, first line people, be filled with your strength. And may the light of love and hope prevail among all of us as we keep your light shining. And as we heard last night, as we not only keep the faith, but spread the faith. May we do so standing firmly in the one who loves us without condition, whose love lights our hearts like a lamp to share that illumination with the world. So we gather up all these prayers, our prayers of joy, our prayers of jubilation, our prayers of thanksgiving and gratitude, and our prayers of healing, trusting that they are heard and that we continue to body, embody them as we live your light into the world. So we lift up these prayers in your many names and in the name of Yeshua and Mary and divine love and healing. And may we continue to pray together as we pray the prayer of Jesus in our bulletins. God, who cares for us, the wonder of whose presence fills us with awe, let kindness, justice, and love shine in our world. Let your secrets be known here as they are in heaven. Give us the food and the hope we need for today. Forgive us our wrongdoing as we forgive the wrongs done to us. Protect us from pride and from despair and from the fear and hate which can swallow us up. In you is truth, meaning, glory, and power. While worlds come and go, your presence is eternal. Amen. So as is our tradition, of course, um, we invite uh, different people to lead different things. So um, does someone want to sing the Shema this morning? Okay, Dean, thank you. And does someone want to read the Gospel of Thomas? Okay, Nancy, thank you. And does someone want to read the poem? Okay, Hope, thank you. Great, wonderful. Okay. Please sing after me. Shema 
Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai the Gospel of Tabas. Yeshua noticed infants nursing and said to his students, These little ones are taking milk, these little ones taking milk are like those on their way into the kingdom. So they asked him, If we too are little ones, are we on our way into the kingdom? Yeshua replied, when you are able to make two become one, the inside like the outside and the outside like the inside, the higher like the lower, so that a man is no longer male and a woman female, but male and female become a single whole. When you are able to fashion an eye to replace an eye and form a hand in place of a foot, in place of a hand, sorry, <laughs> or a foot for a foot, making one image supersede another, then you will enter in. Yeshua said, I chose you from a thousand, two from 10,000, and you will stand on your own feet, having become single and whole. His students said to him, Take us to the place where you are, since we are required to seek after it. He answered them, whoever has an ear for this should listen carefully. Light shines from the center of a being of light and illuminates the whole cosmos. Whoever fails to become light is a source of darkness. Celebrating Sanity by Peter Miller. Are the longings of our heart so strange, so misguided, so out of touch with our times? We who companion the forgotten, who seek the healing from, of all nations, who cry for justice, who struggle for peace, who envision a different world. Are we mad to speak of hope as so many die in violence? Be still, my friend and celebrate your sanity. Keep to that path where the spirit befriends us for millions walk with us and share our dreams. Thank you so much for each of those beautiful readings. Millions walk with us and share our dreams. And luckily we have confirmation of that through this recent election. We are not alone, we're not crazy. <laughs> More people, as we know, turned out for this historic election than any other in our nation's history. And so we can celebrate that. The dream is alive. The hope is alive. And while we celebrate, I invite us to pause and reflect. What is that dream? There are times when it almost feels so rusty or dusty that, we, that we've forgotten. Maybe we were, dared not to hope. So we became a little numb, but now we get to take it back out and say, no, let us remember, let us envision what is the dream for the world, for the planet. I don't know if you noticed uh, last night after the prayer vigil, as Joanne said, uh, Joanne, Kimberly, Call, and I, uh, with our masks on at a distance in the office with the window open, uh, watched uh, the uh, Biden and Harris acceptance speeches live, uh, which was lovely since it started right after the prayer vigil was over. And I don't know if you noticed, but we noticed that flanking the stage, there were two uh, big screens and the screens, the words kept changing, but the phrase remained the same. So I wanna repeat that again today, that what the screens were flashing was, The people have chosen empathy. The people have chosen hope. 
The people have chosen science. The people have chosen truth. The people have chosen unity. The people have chosen. Indeed, we are not alone. Our nation has chosen empathy, truth, love, justice. This is the world we wanna create. So now we can dream and dream big and come back to those spiritual principles of our hearts to try and live and be and envision the world we want today. In a similar fashion, uh, Kimberly Call shared a beautiful poem with me that I will share with the congregation this week, it was by a woman named Shannon Wills. She wrote it on election day. And this was the dream that she was voting for. She says, I voted today. I dropped my heart into the ballot box and cast my vote for the world I want to see. I voted for country over party and planet over country. I voted for everyone and their dog. I voted for the ancestors and the dreams they prayed we would fulfill. I voted for the children, carnivals and innocence and joy. I voted for the elders, soft wisdom, busy hands weaving webs of time. I voted for the divine feminine to rise again and take her throne. I voted for the moon. I voted for the great spirit to guide us toward our rightful place at the feet of the sacred through the gates of conscience that we may find our way back home. And of course, I voted for love. This is the dream that we want to envision, voting for love. And of course, not just sentimental love, but the love that takes all beings, all people, including our planet into account. So I invite us in this moment, as we pause, as we take a breath, as we pause to take it in, knowing there are so many challenges still to face, that we indeed give thanks and that we dare to dream, dare to envision, dare to imagine what we can do to help bring this world about. The last four years have taught us anything. It is that it is not just up to any administration, it's up to all of us to come together, to unite, to find solutions. Hopefully the way for that now will be easier. Let us pray that it is. And of course we know, as has been articulated so beautifully in these prayers, that we also indeed need to pray for healing for our nation. As we know, it was a very close race. Half of the country did not vote for the president elect. How do we heal that kind of divide? How do we bring this together for a new thing? I honestly invite us to reflect on the color purple as a metaphor for that. When we think about it and we think about red and blue coming together, red states and blue states, red ideology, blue ideology. If we think about the color purple, one of the things I love about it is that when you bring blue and red together, it makes something completely different. I don't know if you can see it. Of course, I'm wearing purple today, but it doesn't, it, it, the color doesn't really show up well enough here. But if you stop and think about purple, it doesn't really look red or blue, right? It kind of is a whole new thing that's created and yet it still contains the essence of both. What's the new thing that we wanna dream and envision? What is the purple thing that can help bring us together? Maybe it's a purple heart that we need, a purple heart of courage to see each other through the eyes of love. I think Jesus actually gives us a recipe for this today in this famous passage by the Gospel of Thomas. 
And I've put all three Logians together, 22, 23, and 24, because I actually think they form a kind of unit, even though they're not necessarily always reflected on that way. But it's almost like a three-step process, as Jesus always instructs us on the spiritual healing we need to become the outward healing we need in the world. So Jesus is inviting us, of course, to start with ourselves. If we want the healing out there in the world, we have to start with ourselves and our own inner healing first, right? So he invites us first into this union of opposites, which I believe is both psychological and spiritual. And if we look at the first half of that, which probably includes the psychological, he has this famous list of opposites. When you are able to make the two become one, the inside like the outside, and the outside like the inside, the higher like the lower, so that the male and female become a single whole, then you'll be able to enter the kingdom, not just into heaven or some location, into this realm of enlightenment, this realm of higher consciousness. Now, we know from looking at kind of from a psychological view, there's all kinds of ways we can see that the integration of the opposites within ourselves, the integration of our own kind of yin and yang. I think this include what, of course, Carl Jung talks about in terms of the integration of our own shadow. What are those pieces that we might be tempted to break off because we don't like them and we want to hide them away? We can so easily project them onto the other, demonize the other. When Jesus would invite us to also take that back in and look at ourselves, how do we love those parts of ourselves that we don't like? That is part of knitting ourselves into a whole. I think that is true then for us when we're looking at each other across the nation as well. If we kind of split those shadow pieces of ourselves, it's very easy for us to look at someone with an opposite view of ours and just label them. I was so glad when Joe Biden last night said, we, need, we don't need any more demonization. What we need is humanization, right? To see each other through the lens of the heart, to remember that we're all human beings. I know that's not always easily done. I have friends that I've known since I grew up that I know voted the opposite way for me. And I am also trying to shower them with love today. What I know from that is that what the media portrays is not necessarily true. Whoever might be in the opposite of us, it is not one broad brush stroke. Not everybody actually thinks the same way. Those who voted for Trump do not necessarily even all agree and they're not all necessarily racist. So it invites us to really try and as those were pointing out in the beautiful prayers today, how do we listen to each other, humanize each other? There are some folks that I have to admit that are even harder for me to do that with, who have come into other kinds of thoughts that I don't agree with and I'm challenging myself to sit down and have a conversation and not just gradually drift away? How do we stay engaged? How do we humanize each other? That starts with us integrating all parts of ourselves and loving all parts of ourselves, I think. Then I think Jesus invites us to welcome the divine presence into that. I think that's the second step. So there is this sort of interpsychological unification, but then there's also a spiritual unification that Jesus is talking about. That's the next step. This is where he ta starts talking about a hand to replace a hand, an eye to replace an eye. Personally, as I read that, I believe it also is part of the context of what we've talked about the last few months about the Kabbalistic understanding of the different realms of consciousness that all exist together on the great tree of life, also known as Jacob's Ladder. And if we just remember that briefly, there's a realm if you think about it as a metaphor of a tree at the top of the tree of a realm of complete divine unity, we're all as one. Then it starts to come into density and you have the spiritual template of the highest form of every created thing and the truths of peace and unity and freedom and all of that. Then it gets a little denser and we drop into the psychological realm. Then it comes all the way fully into the physical Odyssea. So this marriage this way is about bringing that divine realm of wholeness fully into manifested form. So we can do that with ourselves, bringing our higher self, the divine source, connecting with the root of our being, 
fully into our being. So we become the unified one, the whole one. That's the next phrase in the Gospel of Thomas, then we notice. First, it's about the union of opposites. Then it's, you will stand on your own two feet, becoming an individuated self. You will stand on your own two feet, becoming single and whole. The word, the single one in Aramaic is Ahidaya, And it was one of Jesus's earliest titles because he was the unified one. He had unified all parts of himself and unified himself so much with the divine presence that he was Ahidaya, undivided. I think this leads to the next phrase then. You will become a beacon of light that shines out from the center and illuminates the whole cosmos. As we become united with divine love, then that love can shine out from our centers and hopefully we can influence the world with love and divine light, with our very presence. As we become unified, Ahidaya ourselves, I think it's interesting that uh, Cynthia Bourgeau in her book on Mary Magdalene talks about this and she talks about this passage on the Gospel of Thomas and how she believes that Mary Magdalene learned from Jesus how to do this and then picked up the torch and kept it going. That her very presence was filled with such a presence of divine grace that it influenced the disciples and reminded them of their larger purpose. I'm going to quote from Cynthia Bourgeau here. Mary Magdalene moves among the other disciples as one who has become Ahidaya fully human or become unified in herself. Flowing through the spiritual energy of her own alignment is a grace that is able to actually shift the other disciples' emotional state. She is able to, quote, turn their hearts towards the good. So how do we so follow that example, connecting ourselves with the divine light so that we can share our light with our field of influence? I know it's hard when we think about the magnitude of the nation and the challenge that is before us, but I think it also starts with each of us in our own spheres of influence, trying to share the light of love reconnecting ourselves to love. And I don't think love in that way then is a sentimental value. I was reminded recently of this awesome quote by Cornel West, who says, justice is what love looks like in public. Justice is what love looks like in public, just like tenderness is what love feels like in private. And it's not the kind of justice that, again, sort of just forces its way in, but it's the love in justice that stays connected to our hearts, to our own divine light, to the healing. And with that, I want to share a quote by Miriam Williamson, Marianne Williamson, who is talking about this kind of love, this radical love that circles us back to where we started to envisioning the dream we have for the nation, for the world, and how we can be part of it. This is from her book, Everyday Grace. She says, we are taking the mystical journey as a way of transforming the world by transforming ourselves. Only by finding the love within us can we provide the love that will save the world? There is so much love in the human heart, yet hatred threatens our planet. And why? Because hatred is currently more committed than love. Indeed, the forces of fear in this world are more disciplined, more courageous in a perverse kind of way than the forces of love. For hatred, as we know all too well, has no problem announcing itself and its intentions to the world. Our response should not just be that we oppose hate. Our response must be that we love the world. Our task then is to harness the energies of love, to actualize its enormous power in practical and meaningful ways. Love too must announce its intentions to the world with all the passion born of a compassionate heart. 
let us announce our intentions to the world. Let us dare to dream big and embrace the all and seek to come together in a way that's courageous. Having first become united ourselves, united undivided ahidaya with that divine love in our hearts so that we can work for the unity of our nation and for the world. I invite us to ponder that in our hearts and just take a moment of silence to reflect on that. So I invite us to take a deep breath, let it out on the side, and then to just notice what you noticed from the readings, from the quotes, from the sharing, what is bubbling up in your heart? What wisdom do you feel, know, and see? And invite us to share that with each other. mandate invitation <laughs> you gave us. Um, uh, yeah, Hope. You know, I'm raising my hand and I'm not even sure what I'm gonna say other than I, I wanted to thank you, Kimberly, as, as always for the way you weave together things so beautifully and articulate things that can help all of us in the things that we struggle with and to, to you know, keep things in that divine light and um, trying to aspire to be our better selves. Um, and the, the comments that are coming out of each one of these little boxes from each of you, really appreciate it. Um, I know we're all kind of relating to one another and benefiting by, you know, everybody's perspective. So I appreciate everyone, you know, everything that's been said here is how I feel too. And I'm just really happy to be part of this community where I, we have this common bond. I love you all. Thanks, Kimberly. Great sermon. Much needed. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's great to see you all. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Anybody, anybody else? I have an allergy to cold, by the way. I'm not sick. I just, <laughs> when it gets, when the temperature drops 50 degrees in one day, I, my body does weird things. Um, in the, in our house it does. Um, so, so I want to share, I'm really excited to share this next song with you. If we don't have any other burning things, because to me, this, um, it's a sweet honey in the rock song. I love it. And it's so soulful. And, and if you know this group, uh, beautiful, amazing group, they, they're just, it's all a cappella. And so they're doing all the rhythms in their bodies. And every time I listen to it, I feel like I experience a healing in my own body. And, and I chose it. I, I chose it long before, you know, I have to put together the bulletin on Wednesday. So I, um, I didn't know uh, what the outcome was going to be. And I thought we're going to, no matter what the outcome, we need to keep going with this dream it is it is it is up to us together to hold this dream of unity and love and freedom and justice and and how do we want to keep carrying that banner forward no matter what the election results are so um that's in the spirit both of, of celebration and continuing to hold that dream uh alive um, that we um share this beautiful i i think it's a beautiful video of sweet honey in the rock singing this song about freedom. And um, if you wanna stand and kind of move with it, you're welcome to do that. Thank you so much, Micah, and invite us to just to really let it soak in to our beings this morning. Go ahead, thank you. Sons is as important as 
the killing of white men, white mothers. If you like it, we who believe in we who believe and in freedom tell it The older I get, the better I know that the secret of my going on is when the reins are in the hands of the young who dare to run against the storm. Cause to me, young people come first. They have the courage where we fail. And if I can but shed some light, I say, carry us through the gate. Don't need a whole lot. I've come to realize that teaching others to stand up and fight is the only way my struggle survives. I'm a woman who speaks in a voice, and I'm supposed to be heard. At times, I can be quite difficult. just an amazing song. I absolutely love it. Uh, I kept listening to it all week. So if you YouTube it, you can just go to YouTube, Sweet Honey in the Rock, enter that song. And, and of course, they have so many other amazing, beautiful, inspiring songs. And, and may we continue to keep that torch alive uh, of the love and freedom we want to see in the world. So let's dream the dream. And as we come into that, then I invite us to um, <clears throat> share together this closing uh, prayer. And, and let's really say it as a prayer. 
um, for our world. And let us share that together. God, illumine our minds as never before. Let us forgive this century and every other. Stop the war in ourselves and in the world. Remove from our hearts the illusion that we are separate. May every nation and every culture recognize the pain of our common fears and discover that one amazing heartbeat we all share. And let us then sing our closing song together. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Amen. May we keep the faith and share the faith. And so if we have any particular announcements or any other sharings that we want to uh, 